and welcome to Tech24 with me, Annelise Borges. Coming up, a giant on the rise. The French video game industry is the second largest in the world. We'll have a look at a sector that employs 5,000 people and generates an impressive 3 billion euros a year. And in Test24, we check out the latest version of Tomb Raider. But before we get to these stories, let's take a look at the figure of the week, brought to you by Le Journal du Net. Every month, internet users spend nearly 27 hours online. British internet users are the most prolific, spending almost two days per month online, followed by Dutch and Polish surfers. French internet users are the fourth most frequent surfers, averaging 30 hours a month. The Swiss and Austrians are Europe's least dependent web users, spending almost 18 and 16 hours online per month. You think about France and its cultural exception, and what comes to mind? The comedies of Molière, Jean-Luc Godard and the Nouvelle Vague, Amélie Poulain? Well, think again. The primary cultural industry in France is the video game, or at least the largest cultural sector by sales. Video game production turned over 3 billion euros in this country in 2012. By comparison, the French cinema generated 1.3 billion euros the same year. At an international level, France now ranks second in the number of video games produced just behind the United States. Let's take a closer look at the French video game industry with this report. A game for smartphones where you build an ancient Egyptian town, a police investigation revolutionizing video gaming, and an adventure at the heart of the American Civil War. Three successful games with one thing in common. They're all made in France. This Parisian startup began with only four employees in 2008. Today, there are 70. Why? It was among the first companies to create games targeting social networks. So this game is called Pyramid City Adventure. It's based around building a town in ancient Egypt. You need to stock up your homes with food so that you can then collect taxes, for example. The game is free, but you can spend small amounts to build your town more quickly. The company only needs 5% out of the 100,000 gamers to spend money in order to break even. A business model now copied by all the big game studios. Some say it's the future. Today you can reach the consumer directly, so a developer working from his garage can create a game and make it available to millions. A game which sends you texts, emails and asks you to solve an investigation by researching clues on the internet. Alt Minds is a French creation and claims to be a unique gaming experience. No joysticks, everything functions through a social network. Minute by minute, hour by hour, you receive different information, different characters, and then you can click on videos or click on a document and analyze it. You have to scrutinize videos filmed specifically for the game by real actors. This French game developer is bending the traditional gaming rules. It's a new style, a new way of playing games, where video games, TV series, social networks and literature all come together. You spend a lot of time reading, and it's like an interactive novel. In the classic action video game category, Ubisoft, the French developer, is competing as an equal with the biggest US studios. Assassin's Creed is theirs, as well as the Raving Rabbids series known in France as the Lapin Crétin. But what's the key to this French success? The North American model is more based around the spectacular, whereas the French or European model is far more based on interaction and creativity surrounding the interaction. Thanks to the internet and smartphones, the video game market in France is still on the up. In 2012, it totaled 3 billion euros, twice as much as the movie industry. Mark Edwards joins me now. Mark, let's talk about Ubisoft. The world's third largest independent video game publisher is French. But it actually, the company actually generates almost half of its revenue in the United States. Just 7% actually comes from France. What does this say about the market? Well, the most important thing to retain is how, how huge the US market is as a whole compared uh, to, the, to the rest of the world. But also, I mean, the video game market in France is very complex. Uh, if we look at you know, Ubisoft with titles such as Assassin's Creed and Splinter Cell actually has its major operation in Quebec, uh, in, in Canada, and uh, where it's got two and a half thousand employees. Now, the problem with France is, is the tax incentives for video games are very, very hard to achieve. In fact, last year, only three titles uh, we're, we're able to, to take advantage of this. A lot of reasons. The first one is, you know, you have to... Games that, that are... Uh, 
on over 18 or for guys who are uh, people aged over 18 uh, don't qualify for this and as the average gamer in France is 35 years old this kind of cuts out much of the market now uh, you know France, at the end of the day, can't compete with Montreal, with Quebec, because Quebec pays 37.5% of the employees' salaries out there. So it makes logistical and it makes economical sense to, to have all of their operations, all their major operations, for Ubisoft out in Canada. OK, thanks for that, Mark. And we'll move on now, because it's time for Test 24. Lara Croft is back. After being inducted into the Walk of Game and the Guinness Book of World Records, the most successful human virtual game heroine is back with a new Tomb Raider that Mark Edwards tested for us. Mark, what did you think? And this, I'm going to be absolutely honest, it was, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It's Spend the whole weekend. Whole weekend. Best part of this job is having to test games and testing uh, Tomb Raider it was a fantastic experience. It was great to see Lara Croft back. Let's not forget how much of a game changer she, she was when she first appeared. You know, the first time we had a lead part, a protagonist that was uh, a woman who was strong, uh, who wasn't, uh, you know, just, just being sort of rescued by, by big strong men just there for eye candy. She was was doing the rescuing and uh, and leading the adventure and in this game it's a very cinematographic uh, game it's full of action really is there enjoyed. anything anything particularly different about this game <laughs> i guess the main difference is how uh, how different it is from the original. We don't have as much of the puzzle-based uh, action that we did where you spend a lot of hours trying to work out exactly how to complete the level. This is far more of a linear story where you just follow Lara around and it's, it's, the script is very Hollywood. Uh, you know, the production levels are, are, are through the roof and it gives you this whole all, 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 in, all interactive uh, uh, experience that really is very enjoyable. Now, briefly, how did you rate it? Right, visuals, as I said, the graphics are fantastic. That was a solid 9 out of 10. It's the best game I've had in a long time. Playability, easy to play. Longevity, they could have done with a bit more multiplayer, so it only gets a 7 out of 10. But overall, it is a great game. Highly recommended with an 8 out of 10. Thanks for that, Mark, and thank you for watching this edition of Tech24. We leave you today with a special version of Donkey Kong. YouTube user Mike Micah hacked Donkey Kong so that his three-year-old daughter could use a female protagonist named Pauline to rescue Mario, as opposed to Mario rescuing Princess Peach. There you go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.